Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Tabletop Wars. I'm doing another video, this time on the tile system that I've been developing. I've done some work off camera, but I'm here to bring you the synopsis, synopses, or whatever you want, a uh, little in input onto what I've been doing. <clears throat> now, the reason why I didn't record all this on camera is because it was taking far too long. The video, the recording I was doing was up to five hours and it hadn't have anything interesting to watch. So I'm doing it this style instead. If you like this new style, please, please let me know in the comments. So my main focus was on the tile system and I want to explain to you why. In my game, the tile system is one of the most important parts of the game because... If you can't move your units around the board, what's the point, right? So we have our planes prefabs on the ground, along with our ocean tiles prefabs. It's still the same, we have our holders, we have management, I've added controls manager, and event system manager. And uh, the event system manager is basically what is controlling it. I might change this later depending on how I feel about it because I don't think it's really appropriate to be under the event systems manager, but for right now I think it's okay. Um, basically, um, I'm not even using the event manager. I st initially started using it and it just didn't work out. All the nitty gritty good stuff is in the controls manager, which I will go over how this, well first off I'll show you what exactly it does and then I'll go over how I did it. So, if you look over here, I made a couple changes to game state, I believe. Added uh, the current state and the current substate. So, what I mean by current state of the game. So, whether it's initializing, in gameplay, or some other one. And the substate is either idle, unit selected, or unit movement. Uh, the nice thing about this is I can add more and then I can tell things to do things and to not do things depending on the state and on state change, you know, all that good stuff. So if you if I click the unit, you can see it changes to unit selected and then I can click any tile over here and it'll move. And once it's finished moving, it goes back to idle. Now when you're when it's moving, you can't click on it, which is nice. And it's just really it's a really nice movement. It's a really nice movement. It's it's nice. And I can adjust this variable of how fast this unit moves, yada yada. So there's a lot of a lot of things I can do with it now that I've got that working. And I do have a null reference exception I need to chase down of why this is throwing a null reference exception when it checks the if statement. It doesn't really make sense to me. Okay. So we haven't done anything with this, so don't worry about this. This is empty. That's for later. Um, so we uh, we define a game object as a selected unit because we want that to hold what the currently selected unit that we have or what we're trying to move is. And then we have unit movement speed. It's at 0 0.1 because that's still pretty fast. I could even lower it down to probably 0 0.08. It would probably be a little bit smoother. But this is going to be a variable that each individual unit has. So, you know, some units are going to move faster than the others just to fit the, like, their style. Um, we have unit position, which is a vector three. I set it to zero at the start, or it's the, it's the starting var definition is zero. Tile position, same way. Um, what these two are, are basically, it's going to hold. When I select a unit, it's going to hold the unit's current position when I select it. And then tile position, when I click a tile, it's going to hold the position of the tile when I click a tile. And we don't need journey. I think I can actually delete that. Uh, then we have spaces to move, which is a vector two. This holds the amount of spaces that the unit needs to move. I'm actually not sure if I use that still. I might delete that. Serialized, private variables, transform, tile transform. That's just going to hold the, tra the the actual transform component of what our raycast hits. So we have an update function, and the very first thing it does is it ch it's checking this for when the the mouse click is clicked, and the current substate has to be idle, or the current state has to equal unit selected. So a little bit of a you know prerequisites and then if it goes in here it raycat it it defines a hit object to hold the uh, hit information i define a game a temporary game object i define a temporary ray which is the the camera's 
screen point array and from where the mouse is so it shoots where i'm pointing my cursor and then i raycast and then i check here this is actually where the uh the error is coming from for some odd reason i'm checking to see if it's not <laughs> i'm making sure it's not null and it's still throwing an exception which is odd but hey whatever i'll deal with it later um then we have we're checking to see if we clicked on a unit or a tile if we clicked on a unit we set the current substate to unit selected the selected unit which is the variable the global variable that holds the game object we we define that and then if the user clicks again and it's not unit so it would be a tile then then what it does is it goes in here and it says oh is it a tile and then it asks is it are we currently in the unit selected substate and if that's true, then we set the unit the unit position, which is that vector three, to the to the current position of the selected unit, the tile position to what we hit, and then we set the tile transform to that the transform of what we hit, and then we say we set the substate to unit movement. We define the spaces to move as a temp as a we give it the base zero, and then the x is math abs unit position x minus tile position x what math app abs is is uh it is a uh, returns re returns a whole number it will never return a float which is which is nice uh, so we do that just to make sure that it's always going to be a whole number and then what we do is we tell the unit to look at the tiles the tile position x so it's going to be like moving on the x okay i'm going to look at the x and then after it does that, we exit that if statement. And this is what's called every frame per second while the unit is moving. We say if the substate is currently unit movement and the tile transform is not null, then we move. And we plug in spaces to move, which is uh, how many spaces in each axis we have to move, which is nice. It's nice to have. I don't, I don't think I actually use it anymore. I was trying a lot of different things. Um, so... First thing we do is we ask, is uh, the current position of the unit's X approximately the same as tile position X? So where we want to go on its X. And if it's not, and if it's not equal to, if it's not entirely equal, then we go in here. I think this part's actually kind of redundant, but hey, it works. I'll delete it later and see if it still works. Um, and then we say, hey, we're creating a temp unit position, which is just holding, you know, the current position of the unit. And then we have a temporary destination, which is the the trial transforms X one because all units are w like one on the Y. And then the, the, the selected units transform position Z. And this makes it so it's only going to be moving towards the destination only on the X. And then we say move towards, and we say the current position, which is the death, which is the start. This is the starting position. This is the ending position, and this is how fast it goes. And this is called every frame per second until it, until this is true. When it's approximately at the same location on X, then it goes into here. And it says, okay. Well, this is true, so now we need to make sure that we reset the unit to a whole number. So we're gonna we're gonna create a temporary vector three to store the unit position, the current unit position. We're gonna say temp x equals the tile transform position dot x, and we do this because math f it's going to give you some really 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 small number, and it probably wouldn't impact gameplay too much. But it would just bother me to see that decimal point every time a, every time after a unit moves. So all I'm doing is resetting the position so that it's whole. So we're on the same, like, the exact position where we want to be. And then after we do that, we tell it to look at the new position, which is its X and Z. So it's going to be like, okay, now we want to look at both axes. So it looks at the tile transform position, and then it does the same thing. It's, it's at, okay, it says, okay. All right, is it approximately near the X? The X is approximately close to each other, which should be true because it, if it got here, because this would be true. And the Zs have to be not near each other. 
So then it's going to come in here and it's basically going to do the same thing. We define temporary unit and temporary destination. We move towards that at the unit speed and then we just keep doing that until that is true. So if if the unit is approximately close on both the X and the Z, then it comes in here and it sets the transform position to the child transform position X and Z. And then we reset the variables, which is this function that just resets what the tile transform is, the tile position, the unit position, and selected unit goes back to null, and we set the game state to idle. And it's a pretty, you know, I, I feel like there could be some things cut out, or um, I could make it a lot look a lot prettier by uh, using using more temporary variables or stuff like that. But it works, and I'm really happy. I'm really pleased with how it works. It works really well. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to put lines so I can put a grid on the ground so I can tell where I'm clicking because I can't tell what square I'm clicking on. But it's definitely really cool. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I did. This, to give you, if you don't have any idea about game development and how long this took, <clears throat> this took about nine hours. Just this. Just this. Took forever. But it, it, it was worth it because that is a solid, solid movement. But yeah, that's pretty much the video, guys. I will be putting out these videos regularly after I accomplish something so in this case it was a tile system well i say tile system but more it's, it's more of the movement system so we tackled the movement system this time in the next video it should cover creating prefabs of more land units and uh, making it so it actually moves based on the unit speed rather than one defined variable so we're going to start unit behavior next episode and and yeah, that'll be pretty cool. And so we'll do unit behavior so it, it affects the way it moves and and maybe get terrain to actually affect movement. Because right now we just have planes. We need to throw some mountains in there, make sure that mountains are insurpassable and all that good stuff. But yeah, this is a short video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Comment on what you want to see, what suggestions you have. I love it. Keep it coming. But my name is Ace Spades. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.